Hello, you're with Dave and Tim for the Single Malt Review. Today, it's Muirhead's Silver Seal, 16-year-old. This yes. is entirely new to me, but not new to Tim. So no, it's, um, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of Muirhead's. I just think that's sort of... I think it's fun. Um, mm. And it's also very old-fashioned these days. Muirhead's, um, they sort of do... You could describe it as blind bottle whiskey. Mm. Uh, whiskey where they don't tell you the distiller. And that's increasingly rare for single malts these days. So this is kind of for a bit of a niche market. It's for the market of people that either don't know any better or don't really care too much what they're drinking. Mm. Um, and I maybe come into the, the latter of the two because I'm not hugely fussy about... Um, I'm, I'm no fan of one distillery or another hugely. I just like good whiskey. And I think this is fairly... Fairly good whiskey, but the reason the reason I got this one because it's very very cheap as far as sixteen year old malt whiskey goes, um, and also because I quite like the challenge of trying to figure out mm. exactly what's in here because you know that it's only one distillery because it's um, sort of a shonky and old fashioned a way of bottling as it may be, it's still a single malt. It's a Speyside single malt. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, that's mm. uh, that's something to work with. Uh, of course, it'll be coloured until filtered and 40%. Um, you can probably take that for granted. Although, I must say, um, if it is coloured, they're fairly reserved mm. because that's um, there's nothing too serious going on there. For a 16-year-old whiskey, that could actually be natural colour. 40% is almost comically low for a single malt whiskey in this day and age. It's certainly pretty uncommon. Mm. Um, although, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the big boys... Your Glenfiddichs and your Glenlivets, they're still at 40%, so it's not, it's far from unheard of, I would say. Hmm. Um, but this one, this one's probably a bit more um, out there for what they do. They normally do, I think, a 12, and I think they might do some other sort of regions, but this is the 16, um, hmm. the 16 Space Side, and it's probably, given that you're not paying a lot of money either way, I think it's one of the more interesting ones to hmm. go for. So, um, what I will try and do is discern discern where it comes from, and if someone knows, I've had a wee bit of a look around online, and I couldn't find anything um, sure about mm. where the where the distillery might be. But I'll do my own little investigation, see what we see what our bets are, and if anyone knows, please please let us know in the comments, um, so we know if we were if we were right or wrong. Mm. Mm. But oh. as whiskies go, it's um, it's not nothing really jumps out. It's quite inoffensive. Mm. Uh, which is the tasty notes refer to hints of peat and smoke, and I'm getting a very, very mm. faint impression of that off the nose, at least. Very, very faint. Um, mm. So that's not hugely common for some savoury oiliness. Side. Mm. Not a lot of the richer, sweeter um, characters I'm used mm. to. In this it's book. quite dry, mm. and it's quite. It's more woody and floral than it is mm. fruity. It's not a fruity space side at all. I mean, there's lots of more savoury, dry oils. And See, such. oil oil is something I'm getting mm. quite significantly, and that's, that's a going bit into my prediction later on. It's a bit off the bean track as far as tasting or nosy notes go, but it's reminding me of a smell of oil skin. Have you ever encountered an actual mm. proper old-style oil skin raincoat or whatever? A little so. bit of that. It would be a combination of oil and maybe leather at the same mm. time. Which also would not be an unheard of tasting note mm. for that area. So let's see what's on the palate. Hmm. Mm. Again, with a rich, oily taste to it. Is a wee bit, a wee bit sweeter on the palate, yeah. I think, than the nose gives away. But that oiliness and that waxiness kind of comes through as well, which is... Mm. Quite striking, given that it will be fully, fully chill filtered. Yeah, at forty percent. Scent of olive oil and honey are the first two big impressions I'm getting straight off. A little bit, some flowers and some herbs, mm. but still very, very light. Mm. Um, I think I would have no problem saying that this is a exclusively or damn near exclusively bourbon matured hmm. batch that they've gone for here but that really doesn't zone it down too much that'd be consistent with a fairly bright color uh, but the relatively pale hue if this hasn't been artificially colored which of course we don't know but. so i get there are the space side apples and pears hmm. there is a little little bit of smoke there um but not not indistinguishable 
Mm. Um, but really what I get is the oil and specifically the wax. I get mm. quite a lot of waxy character. Yeah, I'm getting next to no peat out of this come through mm. to the notes on the bottle. It's not strong by any means. Um, there is certain... You could almost call it a space side peat. It's a very, it's a different peat to Isla. It doesn't have any of the tang that you expect Isla to come with. Um, a good way to train your palate if you have any Ardmore handy. Ardmore has a lot of the mainland dry peat, oh. um, <clears throat> and it's that particular flavour which exists in only just tiny, tiny amounts um, in some other, some other very, very lightly peated space side whiskies, such as this. But mm. My bet for this one, I have, I have two picks. Um, one's a very well-known distillery, and one's significantly more niche. And I really would love it if um, someone could tell me whether I was right or wrong. Um, my bet number one for this one is Spay Burn, hmm. and number two is Klein Leash, oh. and one of those. One of those you'd think would be more of a ringer for um, for guessing a whiskey because Klein Leash is very, very guessable as space side whiskies go. Um, I mean, that's assuming it's even space side. And this is that my mind has completely revolted on me. I'm pretty sure Klein Leash is a space side whiskey. Um, there's a very, very small chance now that the doubt has seeped in that it could be Highlands, but. Um, that's what my first impression, my first well, initial instincts tell me mm. that. Goodness, I should have brought a phone with me. <laughs> never mind, never mind. We'll leave that as an air of mystery for now. Um, but yes, my surer pick is the Spayburn Distillery mm. because that has a slightly waxiness element that Klein Leash has. It produces a very, very pale, gentle whiskey like this, and mm. it has that small quantity of very, very dry, but very, very laid back space side peat. I wouldn't recognise a Spayburn if I chased one, so I have simply no basis for mm. picking what this might be. Picking, so picking distilleries, I'm not going to guess. Especially Speyside distilleries, mm. and really Highland ones too, is a massively, massively fraught activity. Yeah. Um, even if I were to find out for sure, um, I would give my chances of a, a hit on that one mm. under 20%, just because of the sheer density and uh -huh. similarity of the, of the um, distilleries. But... My pick is still Spayburn for this one, um, and if someone could prove me wrong, I'd be I'd be mm. delighted to see exactly what it was. Um, it usually turns out to be something, and you think, oh well, <laughs> obviously it was a Glenrothes. You know, I, I I don't think it's a Glenrothes in this case. I think we'd know, but um, yeah. yeah. But I will say for Vispo, despite that relatively low forty percent bottling strength, and it's a light body and fairly light flavour, but it's not thin, mm. weak, or insipid in any way. It's a full and fairly clear flavor yeah no it's got it's not lacking or wanting it's got what it needs mm. i think you'd say and if that's if you simply want something on your shelf or probably more aptly in this case on your bar's shelf that says single malt and has a number on it like mm. 16 um that looks good to a certain section of consumer and this this sort of brings the goods and for the price of let's say not a great deal more than a Glenfiddich 12 or so. Um, it's not a bad buy mm. by any means. I don't know how much the batches tend to um, vary, whether mm. they manage to keep a good consistent make um, sort of release to release or whether their um, sort of haggling for casks means that they, um, the Muirhead's company uh, bottles something slightly different year to year. I don't know. Mm. You'd have to drink way more of it than I do to find that out. Do they also produce, say, a bronze and a gold seal? Uh, I, don't do they, do I don't know. I don't know. I think they might all be silver seal. Right. Um, I'm not sure where the, where the bronze seal hmm. um, exists, if it does. Uh, and I've certainly never heard of a gold seal, so hmm. who knows? Who knows? Um, but no, this one, not, not a whiskey of any great, um, hmm. of any great uh, class or profundity. I just thought I'd bring it out um, to show you all a sort of a different a different side of the market something mm. that exists well outside the sort of the whiskey geeks forum of whiskies you'd normally like to try mm. an unfashionable whiskey i guess is how i'd describe this one unfashionable but perfectly good to drink mm. nonetheless now um, if i had just a smidge of water to that not really necessary something that's bottled at 40 percent mm. but it's um perhaps 
reawakened some dormant characters in there and what it's really done is made it more of a even more mild and quaffable. If anything, it's reminding me of the Glenn Grant we tried not too long ago, which I found remarkably simple mm. and on par of, say, a medium dry white wine. And there's a lot of that coming through now, but I've learned this just slightly. Yeah, in oh. no way unenjoyable. Yeah. And I think that's probably the good tagline for this. It's a it's a polite whiskey, it's a mm. competent whiskey, and it's cheap whiskey. So um, if you're in the uh, if you're in the niche that's in the market for any of those, I'd say it's a perfectly good recommendation. It's nowhere near as interesting as, I mean, we, we tried the Ben Reek 16 um, pretty recently. That should have gone up already if I'm doing these in any kind of sequence. But um, nowhere near on that level of, you know, a whiskey geek's whiskey. Mm. But, but, there's nothing wrong with this one. Mm. And it is much, much cheaper. And there's a certain appeal to knowing that it's a single malt, but not knowing which one it mm. is. But a little bit of mystery just... I think that's great away. fun. I yeah. think that's a really good good way of... Um, engaging your brain and your palate into really, really thinking, mm. what what am I drinking? When you have to ask yourself that question, I think you taste just that little bit better um, and think about it just that little bit harder. Because if you already know, if the bottle's already told you where it came from, what cask it came from, or maybe even some really good tasting notes, mm. you're sort of it's a bit easy to just relax and drink it really and not develop your skills, um, mm. your, your nose and your palate. Um, if it if it makes it too easy for you, so I, I do like this. It's a bit of a game uh, to find out to find out what it is. But at any rate, that was uh, that was Muirhead's Silver Seal. Oh, should um, we give perhaps some scores? God, that would be genius, <laughs> wouldn't it? You can tell it's the fourth whiskey, can't you? Mm. The downside of doing our episodes in small batches, mm. as it were, the no, way we do. The, um, we're in the zone, as yes. they say. Uh, scores, as you say. Mm. I think I think this one would be an eighty-two mm. for me. Um, it's a whiskey that there is nothing wrong with. There's not a lot right with, but that's really not the market hmm. that it's in. Um, it's a perfectly solid whiskey. So 82 for me. What do you think? I give it a 75. It's not standing out or making a big song and dance of itself in any particular way, but it's all around. It's a very competent, very capable, and just a slightly mysterious, curious, light, and quaffable dram. Mm. So there you have it. Certainly within the realms of recommended whiskey mm. uh, we don't tend to taste things that we don't recommend mm -hmm. um, because who has the time really um, and ultimately I've made a mistake if I've bought something like that um, so maybe maybe when we get sent mm. things I can trace something um, truly appalling but until that day until that day it'll be good whiskeys from us sadly mm. sadly anyway um, in the meantime keep safe and slander at least I remember the slander <laughs>